to Who The Bear Videos. <laughs> Okay, today, uh, what I'm going to try and do is um, basically show you the process which I normally go through for making a, uh, an overdrive channel, or overdrive distortion channel, using the, my usual Boss GT8. Uh, today, I'm using uh, a lovely Gibson SG. Um, this one is a little special. Uh, it's got uh, two of the uh, Steve Lukather model DiMaggio pickups in it. Cracking, cracking pickups. Um, anyway, so back to the subject. Again, my usual um, uh, rig, which I'm just doing for these videos. I'm not using actually using any amp like that, so I'm just basically showing you what, I'm, what, what you can do just by getting uh, the sound purely using the GT8. Um, so I'm going from guitar, GT8, GT8 and the stereo, then to the mixing desk, from the mixing desk, then straight into the PC. Okay. Um, today, again, as I showed you in some of my earlier previous videos, I'm going to be using the um, GTX Floorboard FX um, uh, editor for the PC. Uh, hopefully what I can do is I can show you then the process which I normally go through in building up a nice sound. Okay, so here goes. Okay, and here we go. Right, so what I've done is I've uh, loaded up my usual GT8 FX floorboard software. Again, I still can't uh, the praise the lads again for this software. Absolutely brilliant. Right, um, so all I've done is I've called up a, a user patch, which is um, one of the standard ones on the GT8. And um, what we'll do is we'll start off, what I normally do is I'll start off choosing my amp models. So uh, what I'm going to try and do for this now, again, is as in uh, as usual, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the amp model right at the beginning of the chain. Okay, and double click on the amp model, which brings up to my lovely settings. So here, um, for today, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and uh, um, look for a bit of a... Uh, 80s JCM 800 um, rock, good rock tone to, to start off with. Okay, so I'm looking for. Um, let me see. Let's have a look, and perhaps today we'll start off with a nice Soldano. Okay, what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to show you in this uh, in this video. Um, some of the tips I normally use for creating that because most of my my uh, patches I run in stereo. Um, normally for my live uh, rig, I use the the GT8 in stereo straight through to a um, uh, a couple of uh, rack units, a BB Sonic Maximizer and the Boss um, Graphic EQ, and then eventually goes that goes into uh, a Marshall 9005. Um, uh, 50 watt stereo power amp. Um, if you ever have a chance to get one of these and use a rack, a rack uh, gear, yes, they are heavy, but they are absolutely immense pieces of kit. Um, and then run that into two 2x12s. Two so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap for this to start off with straight away to dual left and right. Okay, so that means now what I can do is I can use using preamp. Channel A, one amp, and then channel B, a completely different amp. Um, I'll show you the main differences that that makes. It's phenomenal. Okay, so for the moment, I'm using channel A, and I'm going to chop that then to dual left and right. Okay, what has happened here now is what a fantastic little thing you can do with a... Uh, the GTA is you can put a, a slight, very, very slight delay in the um, the amp models. What some people do is they will put a, um, 
I would say a, a more bluesier sort of tone or a, a slightly distorted sort of tone. And now what also they'll do is they'll put a um, a clean tone as well. But if they put a delay, of, I mean, talking milliseconds here, it it basically puts like a human factor in, as if you're playing two two well two different complete different guitarists to playing this playing at the same time. Yeah, so you have a very 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 slight delay. So what I'll do is I'll, once I've done this, uh, once I've created the main patches for this, I'll show you what that does a, a little bit later on. Okay, so back to my my amp model. Um, I'm so I'm using my little SG, and I'm on the bridge pickup. So this is my tone um, dead, as in uh, with no effects whatsoever. <laughs> Yep, nice and flat. Yep. Okay. So let's um, switch on my first amp model. Right. What I'm going to do is for this one at the start, just so I can make sure that you're only hearing the one amp, is I will switch to the channel B, and I'll make sure that that volume is right down here. Okay. So all you hear, all you're going to hear now, uh, quite possibly, is just this amp now on the left hand side of your speakers. Um, <clears throat> which is a Soldana one. Okay, so let's switch my first amp on. Yeah, let's do that a bit more well in the volume. So nice to be fair. To be fair, as a standard setting, that's not bad. That's quite a nice sound. Okay, so let's have a look. See what it sounds like as a more uh, high gain. <laughs> Again, down to personal preference. Um, some people will rather run it high. Um, if you're a gain head, yeah, and you really like your you know, real sort of heavy sort of gear. Yeah, then that's going to be the, the ticket for you. Um, my sort of influences range from, I would say, um, your Dave Gilmore. Um, I love some of the, I mean, I'm a, uh, an 80s child, so yeah, I'm in my 40s now, so I, I, I grew up listening to stuff like, um, yeah, your John Sykes with, with White Snake, um, Gally Moore, um, people like that. So, um, so yeah, uh, I, 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 I do appreciate a lot of the, the really, really heavier stuff, um, sort of slipknot, sort of, th sort of stuff. <laughs> But um, for me, I prefer uh, to use it on a medium gain. Sometimes, <laughs> it's a bit of a life like life, actually. You, you tend to, after, uh, after a while, back off a little bit on the, on the gain, so you get a lot more of the guitar's characteristics. If you've got so much gain, especially when you're playing live, you'll find that um, you lose that clarity having... 10, you know, bucket, bucket, buckets, loads of overdrive and distortion. Um, you'll find a lot of the um, your, your shredders, people like Paul Gilbert, um, who else are called? Um, uh, Eric Johnson, that sort of stuff. You, you, okay, so Eric Johnson may not be a shredder, but um, John Petrucci, stuff like that. They may not have a hugely, hugely dirty sound to it, so they've backed off. If you listen to people like Guthrie Govan, um, they're not using any any real high gain amps, um, but the way that they that they use those amps is it, it, it's amazing. So um, so what I'm going to try and do is I've I've, got, I've backed off onto a middle, which is taking me down to. I'll go back to the, get to the high so you can see hear the difference. Yeah. 
stuff back down to middle. Don't forget, if you're using a valve amp, um, the power once you once you've been playing for a little while and your and your 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 power amp valves are, are nice and hot and driven, they're going to give you that little bit of extra warmth as well, which will fill out your sound. So just think about that when you're playing an extra live when you're playing a live situation. Okay, now the um, the Volt the Soldano at the moment um, is basically all at twelve o'clock. So let's just add a little bit more bottom end. <laughs> Yep, let's have a little listen to see what it's like with a little bit less mid. Yep, let's have a little bit more. Yep, nice. And then let's add a little bit more treble. Yep, nice. It's a nice sound. To be fair, it's a nice um, starting sound. Yeah, cool. Okay, let's have a look at my speaker types. Um. I'll give you an idea of, of uh, the how that basically the, the the difference in the speaker cabinets can uh, can can have. So let's, let's pop it on the two by twelve version. She's taking all the bottom end away. Let's try a four by ten. Bit more mid rangey. But let's stick it on a five four by twelve. Right, the re the one of the, one of the things that you don't really appreciate a lot when you're using um, uh, just a GTA on its own without this this um, effects editor is you lose this here, which is your your mic positioning. Let me show you the difference. Okay, so this is now emulating so right in the center, right the mic is right in the center of the cab. As I'm dragging it more. Yep, you really get a bit of a difference. Basically what that's doing is is moving the microphone, it's as if it might move the microphone right to the, from the center of the cone right to the edge edge of the, of the speaker itself. Now, personal preference, I, I prefer it normally. <laughs> Run about the 5 6 mark. Okay, let's have a look and listen to what the differences of the different mics are. Uh, at the moment, uh, so I try your fifty, uh, which is a normal. Um, uh, you you sort of see a standard for micing up cabs. It's a, it's a nice Shure SM57. So let's see what this sounds like. <laughs> okay, let's have a try with the U U87. <laughs> That's got a nice, real warm sound to it. So I'm quite happy with that. Okay. Right, let's have a look now. So if there's point for starters now. That's quite a nice left-hand side of my channel. Um, let me show you, I'm not sure we can see the difference now. Uh, when I was talking to you about about the in this in some of my previous videos, the difference that this direct has on it. So this is that's just uh, having um, just the pure patch itself. Now I'll show you with a direct. Can you hear the difference? It's so much more fizzy, yeah. But when you have you when you're using cleaner tones. 
Sometimes it's better to have the direct on. <laughs> I don't know why, but why so rather that to be honest, it just adds more, so much more fizz to the sound. Yeah, again, this might be some of the things you might not discover, but purely just trying to um, get these sounds just by using the GTA itself. Um, but anyway, I'm quite happy with my, my, my left hand side of my channel. Right, for the moment now, I'm just going to knock it back down to zero again. And let's swap over to my channel B. Now, at the moment, it's been, uh, it's um, uh, by default on a uh, Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier modern channel one. Um, but what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to possibly go for, let me see, not some of the fenders. Ah, let's have a look. A nice Marshall GM45. Okay, so let's see what this sounds like now. That would help for having put the channel volume up, wouldn't it? Um, okay, so we were on about 60 odd before. <laughs> What I'm looking for is a uh, let me make sure it's, it's sort of off. Is making sure I have I want a, a contrasting amp, but still with its own characteristics, which stands out. You'll you'll see why later on. If you're using two completely different, com sorry, completely same similar amps, identical amps, and you're just. Um, uh, keeping the exactly the same settings, but just widen it. Then, then you're not really going to make uh, see the advantages of of a dual channel patch. Um, a lot of the people, uh, I think, like Joe Bonamassa. Joe Bonamassa uses a um, a silver jubilee as for his for his one. It's, it's probably it's possibly is is uh, bass sound, and then he'll use um, a dumble or a two rock amp. To pair along with that, because the, the, those other amps on their own might be a bit muddy, but with the the, the Super Jubilee, um, she's got the harshness of the Marshall, of the Marshall. It really contrasts and makes and makes such a difference to the to that final sound. Okay, so let's have a listen to my GM45 just on its own. <laughs> Not hugely overdriven sound, so let's add a little bit more. That's sounding nice now. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to keep uh, my Sennheiser MD4 on that, I think. Because that sounded really nice. Again, what I'm going to be using possibly on the one side is a more of a, uh, a richer bottom end sort of chat, um, sound, but on the on the right hand side, then I'll use a bit more brighter sound to contrast the other. Yeah, it's like basically like painting with sound. Okay, let's have a look now. Let's see if I want a little bit more bottom end on that. Hmm. That's okay. Uh, mids and a bit more a smidge, a bit more treble. Back up a little bit. Yeah, that sounded nice. Okay, so I'll try a bit more presence. That sounded nice. Okay. Right, using my mixing desk now, I'm going to put the other channel back on. But I've muted the channels. So I've got 68 on one side, 68 on the other. Let's have a look. 
So it's like 69 on one side. Let's take that down to just really one. I mean, when you're just using... Um, Just the odd one little uh, cent, I would suppose, in volume is not going to make a huge difference. That's the only, well, the only one little, little, little thing I do, do find about this is you don't actually can't actually manually change the uh, the number in here. You have to use the there we are. I got it. Sixty eight. Um, you have to use the actual dials themselves by using up and down with your mouse. With your mouse, um, but but that's 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 I can live with that to be honest. Okay, so uh, I've got my channel A, which is a nice high gain Soldano SLO SLO one hundred on the middle gain section, um, three quarters on the gain base, just off uh, twelve o'clock. Let's see about one o'clock on the middle, uh, about two o'clock on treble. And about uh, about half past two on the presence. Okay, I'm using a new one U87 on here, um, position six on the mic, and using a four by twelve. Okay, and then again on my um, JTM45, I'm keeping the original speaker type speaker type on this because I quite like it as it is. Um, three quarters gain. 12 o'clock base, just off, well, you can see yourselves all the settings, yeah? I'm still using that middle, middle gain switch. Okay. So, let's have a listen now. So my volume's up. Let me pop on left-hand side. Yeah. So that was my Soldano sound. Okay, that's muted. My right hand side. I think I need a little bit more on in volume on my left hand channel. Moment. On my Soldano. And then on my other channel. Let's just make sure that they see that channel there seems to be a little bit louder. Okay, so I'm quite happy with my two sounds now. Now, this is where the dual left and right. Now, all I've done on my mixing desk here, um, I've got the mid, bass, and uh, treble completely all set at 12 o'clock so it's not it's not um, uh, flavoring the um, each of the different levels at, at all but what I've all I've done is I've uh, using my balance is I've split the, um, the the first channel the left hand channel just a bit more direct onto the left hand side of the, of the speakers and uh, the right hand side of the, the channel on the right hand side rather than having them right in the middle all the time <coughs> I found whenever I'm using it, doing any mixing, any any, um, any sounds, I always try and give the the sound a bit more spatial awareness, so that, that, that to separate them a little bit more, rather than otherwise it t tends to be a bit of a, of a, of a mess in between, in between, uh, jumbled mess. But anyway, so back to my uh, my sounds. Okay, and this is my starting um, uh, sound. Use, uh, don't forget, it's using the, the Marshall JM45 and on Soldano. As you can see, yeah, what a difference. Let me go back to my... Um, this is just a 40 JTM45. This is my Soldano. This is both. I 
as you can see here, such a difference. Now, again, you might be saying, well, I've only got one channel on my amp. Well, what you could po quite possibly do is um, on your input of your amp, you can get a, a, a jack, a single jack to stereo um, converter. So what you've got is two in two female inputs, yeah, with one single output. So what you could possibly do if you really want to, if you want to use and take advantage of the, the, the of the uh, the stereo pair in here and the mixing of the of the uh, of the amps, you could possibly do use one of those at the amp side at your single combo or your single amp and uh, and use this this stereo this basically a stereo effect on it. <laughs> Yeah, nice and it? Okay, so I've got my basic amp setting. Yeah. Now, luckily, um, I'm not getting that much, which is quite surprising. I'm not getting that much uh, uh, noise from my amp, my noise suppressor. Now, what I'm going to try and do, what, I'm, what I, I always try to do with my uh, my settings, is I always stick. If you go think, which is going to give me my um, uh, my biggest cause of noise whenever I'm creating one of these one of these patches, and that's going to be your amp. So the first thing you want to try and do before, if you are going into any uh, any reverbs, any delays, any choruses and stuff like that, you want as as little mess going into your um, your more cleaner effects. So what I advise always to use a noise suppressor straight after your amp. Okay, so I, this, these are sort of some uh, general settings which I'll normally use for a noise suppressor. 65 on threshold and about 30, maybe a bit more, about 40, 36, something like that, on my um, I'm a noise suppressor. So this is off. <laughs> This is on. Yeah. Um, it, I can't tell much difference here, but you'll be thanking me when you actually go to, to use this patch in a live situation. Yeah. Okay. Right. Just to uh, complement that now, I'm going to drag an equalizer in. Now, I'm not sure if you ever used a, um, uh, an, EQ, an EQ pedal, specifically the Boss one. Sometimes they can be, they can actually generate uh, a little bit of noise themselves. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to stick that in between my amp and my noise suppressor. So any noise that this equ equ equalizer does create is going to be hopefully cancelled out then by hitting the noise, noise suppressor just before it goes into any delays and, and choruses. Right, so let's have a look at my, my EQ. Let me pop it on as, this is the default settings you can see here. Let me put this on now. Yeah, so we're not seeing that much difference. Okay, so let's give it a little bit more bottom end. Now, don't forget this. This, this is now applying the uh, an EQ to the to both channels at once. So, in other words, let me go back to here. My both channels here are coming out in a single signal going into my equalizer. So, any equalization that I do on this effect here is actually going to affect the the, the overall stereo sound. Okay, so I'm quite happy with my bass sound. I mean, if you really want, you can go mid scooped, <laughs> which actually takes a little lot. It's put something quite a bit smooth as it is now. And to 
be honest, uh, my original um, my original patch, to be honest, is, is a, quite a, a nice sound to start off with. Let's just give it a little bit, a little bit more cut at the top end. When you're playing live, try not to use quite such bottom end, real bottom bassy sort of sounds. You'll find it just will not cut through the mix of the rest of the band. It'll just sound an, uh, a huge mush. So give yourself a nice bit of cut at the top right, at the top of the the the, uh, the bandwidth. <laughs> Okay, I'm liking that. Right. And all I'm going to do now, personal preference is, let's add a little bit of delay here. So again, I'm sticking that now after my noise suppressor. And I think I'm going to go for a nice panning delay yeah nice where I want that then to have a bit of a longer delay yeah not too much feedback so that's the actual Actual delay doesn't last too long. And I want it to be more in the background, so it just fills out the sound rather than adds a, uh, as an additional effect. Yeah, so you can hear the difference with it off. And it on. It really pads the sound, it pads the uh, the sound out, doesn't it? But purely just by using it as a, just to enhance the sound, rather than using it as an additional um, front effect. Yeah. Okay. And this adds just a smidgen bit of reverb. And I'm going to go for I think a plate reverb here. Now, some people would say, um, "Oh, I, I, I don't really like that reverb because it makes a bit of a mush, and, and I don't, I'm not fussed on delay because it makes a bit of a mush when you're playing." Right, you'll find when you're playing live and using a, a lot more louder volumes, the this nice. Um, uh, ambient effect, the voice subtle effect, when you're playing live in an open area, will be completely lost. And it, it, it won't be anywhere near as apparent. I wouldn't say lost, it's a strong word, but I would say it won't be anywhere near as apparent. Whenever you're using a, um, a patch that uh, you think, oh, okay, I could do with a bit of delay on that, add your effect on it, and then add a little bit more again, because you'll find when you're playing it live, that delay and that reverb will be will be lost in the background. Okay, um, well, I do a cover of uh, "Comfortably Numb," and recently I've been playing uh, switching from, from my clean channel to my nice overdriven Gilmore sound, and finding that the, all my nice lovely delay is gone. But yet, when I put a come in, come get home, and I go back into my patches, and I'm plugging through my uh, my PC at home. And there's a lot of delay there. It's purely just because of the actual ambience in the room and all the background noise and stuff like that. That that that, that nice subtle touch at home is lost in a live environment. So if you want, all I've basically done is I've come in and I've added a little bit more, just on purely just on the amount of the effect. Yeah, taking it back out, and it's been a killer tone. Okay. So just just to be aware, if you want, if I wanted this to, to be uh, an actual more of a um, 
a live delay sound. Yeah. Here. It does sound a fair bit. But this is probably about the amount of effect I would probably have for a live environment. <laughs> Maybe even a little bit more. Yeah. Just for this, for this, just for this video now. Let's keep it on. Keep mine down around about the twenty. So, um, I don't know about you, but I'm quite happy with my uh, my tone now. Okay. Okay, so hopefully that's given you some ideas of how to create your own patches, whether it be mono or stereo. Um, like I said I've just found now that um, since I've gone to the, this using the stereo rig now, uh, it's just made my sound so much fuller. Anyway, so. <laughs> Okay, so that's all us from the Huda Bear videos today. Uh, we'll see, hope to see you again soon. <laughs>